Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark and today we're taking a look at an age contrived, which is brought to you by Bellows and Tint. It's for one to five players, ages 14 and up, and games generally run about 90 to 120 minutes. An Age Contrived is a fantasy Euro game of engine building and resource programming. You play as a god in the Eldronic Pantheon, where you are only as powerful as the mortals of this unstable world believe you are. Your goal is to establish yourself as the Pantheon's prevailing god by securing mortal belief as you advance the mortal realm from its age of darkness into civilization. You will take on the role of one of these gods, deriving your power from the belief of mortals. You will support mortal development through monuments, pillars of civilization, and other lasting achievements. Each player receives a character board and a transmutation device, which you use to channel your energy into the mortal realm. On your turn, you must either charge your transmutation device and program it openly, or use its energy to take as many actions as you have already programmed. Information is open, and the only luck is in the shuffling of the tiles to set up the game. Your choices determine how the game unfolds. Your goal here is to have the most victory points, which represent mortal belief in your god. All victory points are scored at the end of the game, based on how you have placed your energy tokens on the board. Players take turns in clockwise order with no rounds or phases. The game ends only when the last monument is completed. The player with the most points at the end of the game wins. Setup on this one is largely dependent on player count. It really comes down to how many of these monuments are going to be in play. And what's interesting is all the pieces for the monuments, as you build them, they're magnetic. So they attach to these metal bars that you put up through the bottom of the board. It's a really neat and visually stunning part of the game for sure, as you build each section and attach it to these metal rods as a framework, as a structure. So that adds some really nice tactile experiences in the game as you put those together. And you as the player will choose one of those gods and you have your player board for that along with your transmutation device, which I have the deluxe version of the game, which has a spring-loaded transmutation device, and you'll be launching your energy cubes into the world. There are four different types of energy in the game. You've got constructive, invertible, a generative and primal. Primal is awesome. Each god has their own symbol for this. It acts as a wild. You can pretty much use it wherever you want. Very powerful energy that you can use to do various things. Now, each of those types of energy have their own abilities, but they definitely suggest you just play a basic game using them as energy. And obviously you have to match faces when you put them out in the monument and so forth. But these energies are what you're gonna be using to navigate the world and start building monuments and do the different actions available to you. So you have two different types of things you can do in your turn. You're either doing an advanced turn or an actions turn. Now, I'm gonna give you some broad strokes here, just some basics about how these work. If you want more information or want like a detailed play-by-play -play of how all the intricacies work, definitely go check out their how to play video. It is really, really well done. So you have advance. In advance, you're gonna be programming using your energy to get ready to put it out in the world. Now, the first thing you have is your transmuter tiles. You'll see that there's five in play in your device. And the first thing you do is slide those over and you will add a new tile to the end, adding new energy into it, whatever you want from what you have exhausted on your main God player board and putting those into play, getting it ready for actions that you're gonna perform down the road. At the bottom of your board are the different types of actions. We'll take a brief look at these in a minute, but they're tiles and they can be upgraded bigger and better. Also at the top, you have conduits. These are also upgrades you can put into play. When symbols match, you get additional benefits like movement. So having those different abilities for your board can really make your god bigger, better, and more powerful or you can choose to perform actions on your turn. Now again, you can't do both. You can't program your board and do actions. Choose one or the other. When you perform an action, you pick the available action where you have energy in the bottom row and you exhaust the energy putting it back on your board. Then you can do whatever the action calls for. Now, there's various things here obviously. One of the big things you're gonna be doing is deploying. It'll show which of your tiles you can deploy energy from. And in the case of this, you'll advance it and shoot it off into the world. So you'll put those tiles into play. Now, various options. Obviously, monuments is one of the big things you're going for, putting them on the different pieces, matching the symbols, and doing so. Or you might go after achievements on the side of the board 
board if you meet the criteria. And there's also the dimensional corridor. You can put tiles there or energy there so you can eventually, or maybe even now, right away, buy the different types of upgrade tiles to put into your board. Now, you can only ever have seven of these, so you have to make some trade-offs. You have to trade in a new tile and trade out something, you know. So it's an interesting mix of what do I do with this? How do I best use it? Where do these symbols come into play? Other actions available to you are things like reposition. If you have already deployed energy, you can reposition it into an open slot, maybe at a critical moment. Now, you also can charge your channel marker. What does that mean? Well, during your advanced phase or when you do that programming phase of your turn, then you can have the ability to do a second tile, which is really helpful at times. And then you can also choose to claim, like we talked about before, you can buy a new tile to add to your board. So again, being mindful of how much energy you've put into play and what the cost is. Or you might choose to move. There's three options here. First, you have two different tracks on your main board, your God's board. And you can move up these tracks in order to do two different things. When you reach the top, you can either bind your energy to a monument. Now, why would you do that? Well, you have different point values at the end of the game based on how much energy you have bound to any of these monuments. Now, you'll also have to keep in mind that once you bind energy to it, then it is out of your hands for the rest of the game. You don't get it back. Also, there's the pillars of civilization. If you move up that track, you can put one of those in place. Now, those are going to potentially give you lots of points. There are six of those. And if you've bound your energies to all six, then you're going to get tons of points at the end of the game. So it's a scale for sure, based on the monuments and the different types of things that you're doing out in the world. Now, in order to do those things, though, you have to have your god's avatar in that area, or you have to be linked to it in some way. So you move the avatar through the different areas, and if you've moved your miniature into that area, then you have the ability to bind to that monument or build that monument or add to the pillars of civilization based on where you've moved up on those tracks on your player board as well. So your god's miniature out on the board is very determined on the way it's facing. You'll have to move along the track in that direction. And there are areas that you have to cross where you can build bridges basically from the different tiles on your player board, which is known as linked tokens not bridges. So you link the different areas and what's neat here is that it obviously gives you an advantage. You'll have a linked areas, two areas maybe connected to each other, but you can affect the different things in both if you have your avatar in one or the other. But if it happens to be someone else's link token, if you stand on their token, then you can control the two different areas as well. Not control, but have influence there enough that you can place energy tokens and so forth. And the way you get those link tokens is through benefits. So as you complete monuments, let's take a look at that. So you'll see that there are the various types of energy required. And the last player to do so will place their token standing up. All the other players then in turn order will get to pick a benefit, either the benefit that it calls for below or next to the monument, or potentially you can go over to the energy reserve and get additional tokens. You'll see that everybody has energy reserve. So these are all great options, again, giving you many things you can do, but through those benefits is the way that you'll get those link tokens put into place. Now, if you happen to be the player that finished a piece of the monument, your token is standing up and you get to bind that token to that monument. Now, each of the monuments have different numbered pieces and around that area will show you where the numbered pieces are placed. So it's really easy to assemble these if you're not real clear on how they've come together. But it is a really fun, again, tactile experience. I love, probably my favorite aspect is building the monuments in this game. But there's so many different ways to get points. And as you even pull those linked tokens off your player board. Your different types of gods have different abilities that you can have in play as well. So as you move through the course of the game and try to decide how you want to gather points, there's so many options available to you and how to best use your energies. And again, the player with the most points at the end of the game will be the winner. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower Paid Preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. 
Now again, this was just a brief overview of all the possible things going on in this game. There are so much to take in and so many decisions to be made. How best you spin that energy, how best you set up your board in order to program it and get it ready to spin that energy is really key to what you're doing in the game in order to build those monuments to get to the end and have the most points. How you spin that energy to get those points is also key. So I like the decision making in this game. So many paths to pursue and the different gods and their different abilities, really interesting choices. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.